Or is it show me? No, no, no. I'm going to show you a photo of oh, items. Oh, oh. the items. The items in uh, Sarasota. Yeah, I Oh my god. I'm crying my f***ing soul. Sat there for the free house. At the house? No, I put her. <laughs> get, me, get me out of here. I thought, it, get me out of here. Get me back to work. Get me, get. This will be the weirdest interrogation that you'll ever see. In February 2022, a couple disappeared from their home in the 12,000 block of Apollo Drive in Lee County, Florida. Now, one of them was already dead, and the other one wanted to die. Susan LaPierre was a 51-year-old woman who was dating 51-year-old James Lally. After they suddenly vanished, their neighbors grew concerned and called the police asking for a welfare check. Yes, we dispatch your call, Rain. How can we help you? Um, I, I had just called um, because I was going to have somebody do a check for well. The detectives weren't ready for what they were going to find. There were bloody towels, a bloody rake, and drag marks throughout the house. The entire place was covered in blood. A national red alert was raised. A killer was on the loose. Clearly, the detectives had two main questions. Who was the killer and who had been killed? And this would turn out to be the shortest lived mystery ever. Nobody could get in touch with Susan, but James was soon tracked down and was found in Jacksonville, Florida, living with his aunt. There was no doubt that Susan was dead, and it was seeming more and more likely that James had something to do with it. On February 20th, 2022, he was arrested for an unrelated warrant in Jacksonville. The police, the media, and Susan's family were all waiting for answers that only James could give. James is cold, so he asks the officers for a blanket. But what he does with it is something you have likely only seen in movies. He decides it's better to die than to face the consequences of his actions. You can watch him trying to find a spot to dangle the blanket from. This proves unsuccessful. Now begins attempt two, wrapping the blanket around his neck. But he's definitely being watched. As soon as he hears someone approaching, he lets go of the blanket. This might just be the most thwarted look a suspect will ever give. But before we move on, I want you to consider a question that will become the premise of this whole case. Do you think James was really remorseful, or was it all just an act for the camera? By the end of the video, we'll have a solid answer for you. And, uh, How'd you meet her? I met her on the beach in uh, Fort Myers. Okay. She stalked me more or less. She stalked you? <laughs> she was a good girl, man. Mm-hmm. Very caring and compassionate. So? Nobody. It was me. If I could take everything back, man, I could go to show what I... You regret what you did? Horribly. I wasn't wrong. I was done wrong. I, I, I didn't have any. I knew this was the end of the line. I didn't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She didn't deserve this. No. No, it's I agree. This wasn't something that you planned out. It was no. No. just happened. No. Has this happened ever before? Yeah, I had a pretty, yeah, I, you, you got my record, I had to. By now, we know two things. One, something terrible has happened to Susan. And two, James is responsible for it. Whether he did it accidentally or intentionally is still up in the air. But before we hear his version of events, some probing into his background can reveal if he can be trusted. No. When was uh, the... The charge that you did time on, that was the battery from here? Yeah, that was here. Mm -hmm. I was in Hannah Park with her. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do prison time? No. Just, well, just county. county. Ten months. This is the part that infuriates me most. He's a straight-up thug, okay? He has pages, pages of arrests, okay? Kidnapping, false imprisonment, domestic battery by strangulation, narcotics, burglary, larceny. I mean, I can go on and on and on with pages of arrest, but yet he's able to be free 
and doing what he does best, and that is hurt, injuring, and in this case, unfortunately, murdering a person. It sickens me. It's the worst situation I possibly have ever gotten done. You've never heard anybody else like that? That girl Stacy stole my camper from me. I ended up selling the taking the title to the camper, worked my ass off. She was like a fat cat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, uh, yeah, she took my, uh, my mother wouldn't put the title into her name at the time. Who's Stacy? Stacy McGuire. And or Stacy Mertz, excuse me. Is Stacey she related Mertz. to this situation? No, no, no. This, when was this? This, this happened a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And what happened with her? She uh, she wound up uh, taking the title that was hidden and wound up uh, sending the title to her boyfriend and Elizabeth, John Shimadi, and uh, they flipped the title and uh, come to realize when my mother finally said that she would put the, the camper in her name, the title was gone, and she threw a pot of hot coffee at me, and uh, we had a humdinger. You know, I'm there, beat her up a little bit, and she threw a pot of coffee at me. I did, uh, I did a year up here in Jacksonville. Did she die? No. no. Okay. So this was an incident that you already served time for? Sure. The battery? Battery. Okay. Yes. Anything in Fort Myers? No. no. Okay. Uh, this is no stranger to crime. I mean, let's, let's look at this again, okay? We're talking pages and pages and pages of arrests. Those aren't your basic driving while license suspended arrests, okay? In 2015, not only possession of narcotics, okay, but ag assault, resisting arrest, burglary, okay, driving while license suspended, those are the smaller ones, but kidnapping, false imprisonment, domestic battery by strangulation. This is an evil person who has no regard for human life, and he's walking the streets. So it turns out James is not new to crime. The question that arises now is what happened to Susan and how was James involved in it? But this wouldn't take long to be uncovered. Now SCSO Sheriff's Vehicles and Crime Scene Unit vans surrounding her home in Century 21 Mobile Park with yellow tape still up. It's another scary episode for a community that is still recovering from devastating tornadoes that rocked the mobile park just last month. In addition to being a hardcore criminal, James is also an open book. Now you'll hear the entire story directly from him. That no, I mean, Stacy with what? With her? No, no. Her and I have never had any altercation. I've not raised my voice to her. Her mother's an 83 year old pit bull that I'm going to have on my life for the rest of my life. Um, no, we never got any screaming matches or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of got pissed off because I heard her talking on the phone, whispering. You know, about me, that, that you know, my Harley's 589, and he's going to need a couple more weeks to pull the money and, uh, you know, put him in the shelter. That's what I heard, shelter. I, I don't know. I, yeah. And what day was this? Um, what's today? Sunday. Today's Monday? Monday. The 21st. Sunday. Sunday? Saturday, I guess what, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. I, my, my, the whole day is Okay, so was it nighttime or daytime? Nighttime. Okay, so we're talking Saturday evening? Saturday, yes. That would be the 18th? Yes. Okay, and that's when this event took place? Yes. Did you uh, use any other items to strike her? No. Any items to cut her? The injuries that she sustained were all by you? Yes. And they were all with the hammer? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that there's there's nothing else that we need to, you know, look yeah. for or be aware of. No. Okay. So this guy had lived with her for six months, but he got so mad at Susan for wanting him to leave her house that he hit her head with a hammer more than 10 times. Just two months prior to this horrifying incident, Susan and James had had another big argument where she told him he had to leave because she wanted to break up with him. Now that the detectives knew what happened to Susan, they wanted to solve the last piece of the puzzle. Where was Susan's body? 
Was it? I don't know what I was thinking. I drove. I did. After, I uh, what the fuck did I do? After yeah, I drove. I drove up here to uh, get the title to the Harley, mm-hmm. which you guys know about, which which is at Hurricanes. Mm-hmm. And um, Justin and Ronnie wanted the Harley. They wanted the Harley for a while. And uh, the Harley was at the shop, $589. I told Justin, Justin, pay the bill, give me two grand. What was he going to buy, man? I mean, one of us, he's probably going to buy another and shoot myself. After killing her, he drove her in her own car, which suggests a degree of premeditation and a desire to distance himself from the crime scene. While self-inflicted harm can stem from feelings of guilt or remorse, the possibility of him seeking sympathy cannot be considered far-fetched either. Okay. Is the hammer in the car? No. Where's the hammer? The hammer is, uh, I don't know, it's in that field. In the field with? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other items there by her? You, you'd mentioned that you cleaned some things off. Did you clean the hammer? No. Was there anybody else with you? No. It was just you? Just me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's where I'm at, man. You know what I mean? It wasn't planned or anything like that. There was no, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't. Mm-hmm. Was, uh... I cried my f- Sat there for the free house. At the house? No, where I put her. And Barcliffe? Just wanted to get the f up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, after that, what did you do? After you got her out of the car? I had to like a motherfucker. Went back to the house. Was going to take the dog. Left the dog. Cleaned up a little bit. I didn't have anywhere to go. Mm-hmm. I, knew, I knew it was over. Yeah. It was it. You know, I'm a felon. I ain't got a gun. I hung myself. I should have done. I should have done a lot of things. What? Uh, what did you end up doing after? You, you drove back to the house, and then what from from there? I mean, obviously, just drove around in circles in so, the county, or no. Got on 75, drove up here, drove back down, drove back up, and okay. here I am. Um, did you take any goods or any valuables with you from her house or from her, or did you just drive? Just drove. Mm-hmm. He, in fact, did take something from the house. He pawned two pieces of gold jewelry on February 19th, 2022, down in Sarasota. But little did he know, the long arm of the law was already closing in. Lee County Sheriff's Office detectives swung by the pawn shop, snapped some photos of the sold items, and showed them to Susan's mother. She immediately identified those pieces as family heirlooms that Susan wouldn't have ever sold. More evidence kept piling up. Surveillance footage caught James red-handed pawning the goods. With every little detail that is revealed about the case, it's getting harder to determine if his emotions are real or fake. But in about 10 seconds, you're about to see the most confusing part of this interrogation. If I show you a photo, can you, uh... What did you show me? No, 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 I'm going to show you a photo of the items, the items items in uh, Sarasota. Thank you. Either he's a really good actor, or he genuinely does not want to look at the photos of Susan's body, which is even more confusing. On one hand, he's capable of committing a horrific crime without batting an eyelash. But on the other hand, he's suddenly apprehensive about looking at photos of the aftermath. Just want to make sure that um, the items 
never pawned are accounted for. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate no your honesty. No problem. And her mother deserve her mother de her mother deserves it. I lost just lost your temper. Lost my temper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Does that happen often? Do you do you have temper? I got a problem. You recognize those items? Yeah. Okay. And what are they? Her uh, the wedding band and her uh, and the trinket. Okay. And the band is the large gold heart. Yes. And that's the item that you removed from her or from the. No, bedroom? I didn't remove it. it, it, it in the hay, in the hay, it got broken. It got the chain broke. Okay. Where's the chain? I have no idea. You didn't pawn that. No. Okay. No. And then these two items you pawned in Sarasota. Yeah. Okay. If you would, just sign your name at the top. And if those are the items that you pawned, just write items pawned. Today's date is 2-21-22, if you'll put that on your name, or 2-21-22. And it is 10 p.m. Appreciate it. There's no other items that we need to look for. If you murder someone, clean up the scene and then pawn their valuables. It's already a step too far from remorse. Spoiler alert, despite the severity of his actions, James would ultimately face only second degree murder charges. Needless to say, this outcome left many people feeling dissatisfied. Why second degree? So we fit whatever fits the criteria. That's exactly how we charge and the criteria admit second-degree murder, but we always charge to the fullest extent of the law. Um, what did you do with the money from the pawn? $104 with gas. That's all I got. Did you put it into the tank? Yeah, I don't have any money. Did you take any cash from the or from her house? No, there was none. No cash. That was it. Oh, my God. I appreciate your honesty. Is there anything that we haven't discussed that you want to tell me now in reference to the situation? Um, does Jerry know that you're here? Uh, yeah, well, the cops knocked on the door. Okay, whatever. she was there. She yeah, saw him. She was there. Okay. All right. Okay, sit tight. We'll be back in a minute. You have water. Do you have to go to the bathroom or anything? Uh, can I... Uh, go to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. Can we show you on a map of, of where she is? Can you show us? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. So here's Daniel's. So let, 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 let's, uh, if you go, if you're going down Gladiolus. Mm -hmm. Okay. You turn on Michael C. Red. You come to that light. You yeah. hang a left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go, go, go that. There's that little curve, right? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have my uh, glasses. My okay. glasses are totally blind. So you go you down. Any cheaters? My, uh, are you they a have my glasses. The cop has my glasses. I'll go get them for you. Thank you. So you went there, you made the left, and you know how it has, it has like a curve, two sharp curves? Did you go yeah, you turn on pebbles, the south pebbles or whatever. There's like no outlet It says south pebbles. South pebbles, okay. It's my fault, man. It's my fault. Well, what, my fault. what did she say was the reason that, you know, you were going to... She was going to have her idiot friend, Shelly, or whatever her name was, or, or the other chick, Sue, who moved out with from Attleboro, Massachusetts, drug addict, did the math, the whole of I don't, I don't, I don't drink. I smoke pot. That's mm -hmm. it. I don't drink. I no don't drugs. Know, I don't know drugs. I do, you know what I mean? Back in the day, I've had my hangups. I don't drink alcohol no more.
This is clearly a case of overkill. You might have heard of it. It involves using excessive force to harm the victim. Intense emotions often escalate during a crime, leading to an overreaction or excessive use of force. This case was overkill, and in the previous clip, we can understand his frustration over the issue. Are you going to be taking me back to Lee County or no? Um, yeah, you're going to end up going back to Lee County. Um, I don't know if it's going to be tonight, though. Okay. We have to do the logistics on all that. Yeah, I don't want her out there anymore. Yeah, we don't, want, we don't want anybody coming and finding her or, you know, a kid or something, God forbid, you know? Her mother. Yeah, her so. Her father's we're gonna we're gonna go out there and we're gonna pick her up. But I can't tell you exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oosh. Close yours. Yes. Thank you. I'll help you out. So this is going to be the, the very end of Briarcliff. That's the loop. Did you make it all the way to that far? So we got. So look at my face. Actually, look at my chores. So I'm, you tell me the I don't even have that yet. I don't have that yet. We have to talk to them and find out what you have here, so that can be addressed. Cause they pick you up, and then we'll. I'll, I'll be straight with you. Yeah. You know, you've been very honest and forthcoming, and yeah. I'll tell you exactly what we're looking at and what's going to happen yeah. as soon as I know. I don't want to say something that's not true. Okay. okay. We we have a lot of work to do though. I have to go see the car and Jerry and the house and go through all those stuff. So we'll work together right. through this, and I'll share the information uh, as as I can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't want to do nothing to myself until until I met up with you guys. With with you. With the sheriff's office? I mean I mean the the police was, department here? Yeah, was it gonna disappear and leave her out there? Mm hmm I can't believe I did what I did. Mm hmm She hasn't deserved it. She's well, we're gonna we're gonna make she, that part of she's a beautiful woman. She's a good woman. She was just, you didn't know her from before, just met her down on the beach? Yeah, she, 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 I don't know. Honesty is the best policy. Absolutely. I never heard anything from her. I didn't have to. Mm hmm. And it was just uh, surprising to hear her say the shelter. Yeah. Yeah. The mother, you know, and I'm here and Shelly. Mm -hmm. Like you, man. Should have just left. So, so. You know, uh, I'm uh, ready to deal with it. Okay, I appreciate the honesty. Despite his capacity for extreme violence, he's apprehensive about confronting Susan's mother. This could be due to underlying feelings of guilt and shame, or anxiety about the consequences of his actions. But this prospect is daunting for James, as it would mean acknowledging the irreversible harm he's inflicted and facing the potential legal consequences. Suzanne saw a chance to help someone in an even tougher position than she was. She stepped up to the plate. No one should have to fight to clear their mind of horrific images of their sister and daughter's last moments and wonder if she suffered or if she knew what was about to happen. This haunts us. I'm sorry, Barbara. I'm sorry, Christine. Following his transfer from Duval County to Lee County, James underwent trial approximately 84 days after his arrest. On May 15, 2022, he entered a guilty plea to the second degree murder of Suzanne LaPierre. Consequently, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison with no possibility of early release and was additionally barred from contacting the victim's family.
Given the context, we invite you to share your thoughts and insights on this case. Considering James's apprehension towards facing Susan's mother during the interrogation, what emotions do you think were most prevalent in his psyche following the crime? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you'd like us to cover any specific case, please drop your suggestions. Also, remember to like, comment, and subscribe so that we can keep covering such cases. Until next time, stay safe.